You're watching KCCI, Channel 8, Des Moines. Iowa's news leader and home of live Super Doppler. This is KCCI News Channel 8's First News at 5. We the jury in the above entitled cause find the defendant Scott Lee Peterson guilty of the crime of murder of Lacey Denise Peterson. There is finally some closure today for the friends and family of Lacey and Connor Peterson. Good afternoon and thanks for joining us. He's guilty. That's the verdict handed down in the Scott Peterson murder trial. Guilty of first degree murder in the death of his wife, Lacey. Guilty of second degree murder in the death of his unborn son, Connor. Terry Okito was at the courthouse in California when the verdict was read two hours ago and she joins us now. We the jury in the above entitled cause find the defendant, Scott Lee Peterson, guilty of the crime of murder. The verdict came quicker than expected. Scott Peterson, guilty of first-degree murder in the death of his wife, Lacey, and guilty of second-degree murder in the death of their unborn son, Connor. In deliberations, jurors waited through five long months of testimony from nearly 200 witnesses. Court watchers knew jurors had a difficult decision on their hands. Prosecutors argued Peterson had a plan to strangle or suffocate Lacey, then dump her pregnant body in the San Francisco Bay. They painted him as a philandering husband who wanted freedom from family life and played audio tapes between Peterson and his mistress, Amber Fry. The defense readily admitted their client was a liar and a cheating husband, but said Peterson's unlikability wasn't enough to convict. With no murder weapon, no official cause of death, and no crime scene, defense attorneys said the prosecution's entire case was circumstantial. In the end, circumstantial evidence trumped reasonable doubt. Scott Peterson could get the death penalty or life in prison without parole. In Redwood City, I'm Terry Okita. Cynthia, Steve, back to you. Thank you, Terry. So what's next for Scott Peterson? The judge has scheduled the start of the penalty phase for November 22nd. Peterson will remain in jail. And after hearing from both the prosecution and the defense, a jury will then decide whether to sentence Peterson to life in prison or the death penalty. We asked your opinion on whether you thought Peterson would be found guilty. The majority of those who participated in our online poll said yes. Scott would be convicted of first-degree murder. 32% said second-degree murder. 31% thought Scott would be found not guilty. Also on our website, a complete timeline of the Peterson case, plus continuing coverage of the verdict and more reaction. In other news today, investigators now know what caused that devastating Clive apartment building fire this week. And as Michelle Parker found out today, they also say the fire was just minutes from turning deadly. Right, Michelle? That's correct. Authorities were still conducting interviews today, and even though they say they know the cause, they don't want to officially release the information, but they will talk about the kind of battle they faced in this blaze. When fire crews arrived at the Crestland apartment complex, flames shot up and smoke poured out of 8427 Alice Avenue. Firefighter Pat Daly says in many ways, it was like blazes he's seen at other apartment buildings. Flames get outside and they just auto expose right on up into the ceiling, into the, uh, um, into the attic space. And by that time, um, it just moves so fast. We're trained to do a job and, and that's what we do. Firefighter Chris Cross was one of the first to enter the building. We could hear um, explosions coming from inside the apartment. It sounded maybe like shotgun, like a shotgun going off or something like that. Thick smoke and darkness greeted the firefighters inside. We kind of just feel, felt our way down the stairs till we got to the, the bottom floor then you could start to see the glow from the fire through the cracks in the door. And then we opened the door and that's when we, when we saw the the, the apartment I was involved. They also felt the heat. I would have to say it was oppressively hot if you, if you want a, a, a descriptor. Before long, department leaders felt conditions inside were too dangerous for firefighters and pulled them for a while. Investigators say three children in the building at the time could have easily died if their mother had not broken a window and pulled them to safety. The heat build up and the smoke building in the room they were in was growing at such a fast pace that it would have, wouldn't have sustained human life within another minute to two minutes. They were that close to being a fatality. Now, eventually, firefighters were, of course, able to get back in the building. Those explosions came from fuel and chemicals that one resident had for a model rocket hobby. That was not the cause of the fire, but it fueled it. The fire department still had control of the building today to safely dispose of all of those chemicals. And Michelle, what about the people who were left homeless? 
Well, authorities say they either have gone to stay at other vacancies in that complex or have other housing arrangements. All right. Thank you, Michelle. Continuing coverage now on the body found Wednesday night under a Des Moines bridge. We now know the identity of the man uh, teenagers found under the Southeast 5th Street Bridge. Investigators identify him as 49-year-old Lonnie Lee Boucher from Des Moines. An autopsy performed this morning revealed he died of natural causes. Toxicology reports will make a final determination. Now in news from the war in Iraq. U.S. and Iraqi troops now control 80% of Fallujah. Fierce fighting continues in the city for the fifth straight day. Those U.S. and Iraqi forces are battling it, out, battling it out with insurgents who are still holding on in the city's south side. 178 Americans have been injured since the fighting in Fallujah began. 18 have been killed. The terrorists fighting in Fallujah were told not to give up their fight against the U.S. In an audio tape, Abu Musab al-Zarqawi, the self-proclaimed militant leader with ties to al-Qaeda, encouraged his fighters in Fallujah by telling them victory is near. Al-Zarqawi also urged the militants to hold strong and called them heroes of Islam. Side by side, British Prime Minister Tony Blair and President Bush got back to business today. Meeting at the White House, Bush and Blair promised fresh commitments to peace Thank in the you. Middle East. Welcome. Also topping the to-do list for both men, stabilizing the upcoming elections in Iraq, stopping Iran's nuclear efforts, and improving America's ties with Europe. We meet at a, at a crucial time where it is important that we revitalize and reinvigorate the search for a genuine, lasting, and just peace in the Middle East. Bush and Blair also sent their condolences to Palestinians on the loss of Yasser Arafat. Chaos filled the streets in Ramallah today for Yasser Arafat's funeral. As you can see, tens of thousands of Palestinians waved waved, cheered, and fired guns in the air in honor of their former leader. The crowd was so thick that once the casket was removed from the helicopter, it was literally crowd-surfed until it reached the truck that carried it to the burial site in the West Bank. Now on to news around the nation, where the shocking surveillance video showing what appeared to be an abduction may be a hoax. But police are still investigating it as an abduction, and they aren't ruling anything out. We first told you this story yesterday. A surveillance camera in a California mall parking lot catches what looks like an abduction. A black car drives up to a young woman. She takes off running, and the man inside jumps out, catches her, and forces her into the trunk. Police think since the girl took off running as soon as she saw that car, she may have known the people inside. No missing persons report has been filed. A California sixth grader has learned that stop indeed means stop. School officials suspended the 11-year-old after teachers told her to stop doing cartwheels, handstands, and other stunts during recess. They say they were just concerned she might hurt herself. The girl, who was recently named Student of the Month, returns to class on Monday. Speaking of sports, we've got some very important games going on right now here in the state of Iowa. That's right. It's Friday. We do. It's state football playoff time. And Mark Meisenheimer is live at the Unidome in Cedar Falls with an update. Mark? Yes, I am, guys. And earlier today, it was the Class A semifinals. Good news, bad news. Here's North Mahaska beat Northwood Kenset 21 to 17, so we get a win from the local team there. But West Ben Mallard all over undefeated Madrid by a score of 39 to 6. So the Tiger season ends. Their quarterback injured in that game. Clint Jairus will have highlights of that coming up at 6 o'clock. Extensive highlights and reaction. And as you had mentioned, Valley playing Ankeny right now. The score is 7 to 3. Valley in the second quarter. Zach Sandvig scoring a touchdown run in the first quarter. Ankeny and swing with the field goal highlights at six and ten and all that good stuff but for now let's go back to des moines all right lots of good stuff we'll look for you then thanks mark okay we have to turn things over to meteorologist curtis gertz who's going to tell us about a little bit of cool sunshine out there today curtis yeah it was a, it was a bit chilly at times but when you factor in the beautiful sunshine and the light winds it was a comfortable fall afternoon the night's still another chilly one a bright and sunny saturday and you're Nice weather. Guess what? It's going to last right through the weekend. We'll have all the details. Five-day forecast in complete detail, I guess, coming up in just a little bit. Complete detail. All right. Thank you, Curtis. Well, it's only the second week of November already. Time is mm -hmm. flying, though, but the Toys for Tots season is well underway. And that's very important. Today, the firefighters from Des Moines Fire Station Number 5 dropped off just some of the toys 
that they have collected so far. Remember, folks, you can drop off your donations at any of the 10 Des Moines fire stations all over town. We're working hard on Toys for Tots. You might have heard of the soda that tastes like turkey, mashed potatoes, and green bean casserole. Well, we wanted to know what it really tastes like. I'm Eric Hansen. We'll have some of the most finicky palates in the state try it out tonight. And in case you missed it, at the top of our news, Scott Peterson has been found guilty of murdering his wife, Lacey, and their unborn son. There's more to come on First News at 5. You're watching KCCI News Channel 8's First News at 5. Iowa's News Leader, with Steve Carlin, Cynthia Fodor, and meteorologist Curtis Gertz with exclusive live Super Doppler weather. This is KCCI News Channel 8. One of the greatest meals of the year for, I think, every family gathering. Hey folks, in just a couple of weeks, families everywhere will be enjoying a big, juicy turkey with all the trimmings, and a few daredevils may try it with zero calories. Now, earlier this week, we told you about a new way to taste Thanksgiving without having to spend a whole lot of time in a place like this, the kitchen. It's very quick. It's all right here, but beware. Some say it's gross. Look at the color of yeah, that. It's green bean casserole. News Channel 8's Eric Hansen <laughs> headed to the store and picked up some of this. What is this? Well, Stephen Cynthia, it's pop. And as you can see over in the stove today, it is pop flavored like turkey, mashed potatoes, <laughs> green beans, fruitcake, and cranberry. And we just had to try it out. Mm. Turkey dinner should come from cupboards, not bottles. But the new five-pack of holiday flavors is too tempting to pass. So we bought a box and convinced the top tasters at Des Moines' top restaurant to try. Forty floors above the city in the classy Embassy Club. Looking forward to it may be a, may be a stretch. First is mashed potato and butter soda. The smell? It's not appetizing on the nose to me <laughs> at all. And the taste? Just watch his face. Dump bucket? Oh, that's... <laughs> I swallowed it. <laughs> Imagine taking a big gulp of water swimming in your lo local pond. That's, that's, uh, a, that's a foul concoction. I think the mashed potato is so overwhelmingly n not good. How about the turkey and gravy soda? You find aroma of the, of the gravy coming off of it. <laughs> One gulp of the milky brown liquid and the head chef nearly gags. <coughs> oh. That's bad. That's, that's Can horrible. I just smell it? it tastes worse than it smells. And the taste doesn't disappoint. It's exactly what you think it's going to be. Not very good. For a side dish, green bean casserole soda. This is supposed to be green bean. Not exactly what they were expecting. Dessert is liquid fruitcake, a gift nobody wants. I avoid it when possible, but I have had some, and this, this, um, it doesn't get there. That's not bad. Not bad for that one? That's, that's probably the best out of a lot, I would guess. But the best? Cranberry. Tastes like Kool-Aid. So what happens when you combine them all? Only okay. one man would try. Stops, Radio's stop, stop, the stop, round guy. There's nothing prominent at all other than it's all together. It's absolutely horrific. My stomach right now is screaming obscenities at me. Oh, it's just horrible. A glowing endorsement, hey? The set of five bottles actually cost 25 bucks. Part of that goes for Toys for Tots, and it's just now showing up at Target and high V stores. It's called Jones Soda, so let's try it out. Curtis, you've got the green bean casserole. I wish people at home could casserole. see the color, smell the aroma. Yeah, Go for it. Gross try looking. it. It's green. Green beans? Oh, that's tasty. Uh, oh. Steve, you've got the oh. I think I got the giblets potatoes. here. <laughs> Is this the giblets? The turkey and mashed potatoes? <laughs> <laughs> not, good, not good, Cynthia. You've got the uh, cranberry oh soda. Goodness, You've got the cranberry. It's terrible. Cranberry. And I don't even like cranberry no, sauce, oh, so this it. isn't fair. But I figure it tastes like cranberry juice. On this episode of Fear Factor. <laughs> it does taste not, like not cranberry Not that bad. Juice. And I've got, uh, I've got fruit cake soda. I haven't tried it yet. And you're a fruit cake. <laughs> Not, 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 not that great. Okay. As good as a fruit cake? I guess. Salute! I guess. Salute! 25 bucks. <laughs> there we go. Happy Thanksgiving. But there is a donation, too. Toys for Tots. Okay, excellent. So, folks, uh, a holiday gift for maybe someone um, <laughs> you, don't, you like. don't really care for. <laughs> okay, Curtis will be right back with the weather, won't you? Yeah, beautiful weekend ahead. I'll have the details. <laughs> Close captioning on KCCI is brought to you by the Iowa Clinic Women's Center. Going to the doctor just got easier. Visit iowaclinic.com and learn about coordinated scheduling.
KCCI Storm Team 8 is your only team of four certified meteorologists keeping you safe under an umbrella of protection. Welcome back, everyone. What a beautiful sunset out there. We're in twilight right now. A pretty picture, a few clouds, and pretty nice Friday out there. Not a heat wave by any means, but uh, with the sunshine and the light winds, it was a very comfortable day. Presently, we're at 42 degrees with the sunset, and temperature's going to drop fairly quickly. Keep that in mind. Atmosphere, dew point 16 degrees. Atmosphere dry, 35%. High pressure building in, 308 inches of mercury. School net stations, well, you can see the computer right there. This is a great, there you go, 45 in Barnum, 42 in Carroll. That's one of the mysterious computers in the weather department. High-tech stuff, 43 in Grimes, 40 in Sully, and Osceola at a 41 degrees. Across the Midwest, most of the heat now pushed well down to the south of us, but most of the cold air pushed well to the north, so we're just kind of moderate temperatures, 40 International Falls, the same in Milwaukee, St. Louis, 49. Uh, 50 degrees in Wichita. One system well down to the south. Matter of fact, the closest storm system right now in Arizona. We had a few clouds kind of filter on through northern Iowa, and there is a little bit of cloudiness moving in from the southwest. Southwestern Iowa going to be dealing with some clouds Saturday and Sunday. The rest of us dealing with mainly sunshine. Here's a pretty look from our east sky cam pointed up. High temperatures today hitting about 44, 45 degrees. Typically should be around 49, but boy, a pretty nice uh, fall day. And matter of fact, November typically one of our cloudiest months. So any November day with sunshine, a good one. High pressure and control, a bit chilly tonight. Tomorrow that slowly tracks off. We start to get the winds around to the southeast, and that'll kick the temperatures up. It looks to be a very nice Saturday indeed. Not as warm as the last one, but still a pleasant one. Generally clear skies overnight, lows dropping down into the 20s, northern Iowa into the teens. Then as we move through Saturday, Saturday afternoon, mostly sunny skies. We'll start to see clouds increasing on Sunday, especially to the west, but a dry weekend ahead. Forecast lows for tonight, 23 degrees, mostly clear skies. East to northeast winds at 5 to 10. Then for tomorrow, high temperature all the way up to 49. Few locations maybe topping 50, 51 degrees. East, southeast winds 5 to 10. Here's your five-day forecast. And again, just a few more clouds on Sunday, but pretty much the same day as Saturday. Of course, it's the second day of the weekend, so I guess not the same. 49 on Monday, a chance of showers on Tuesday, 51, and then partly cloudy on Wednesday, 53 degrees. You know, I finally figured it out, Steve. Remember that first time you siphoned gas? Mm -hmm. I'd rather try that again than do this again. You know, That's it what looks, I'm thinking. It kind of looks like muddy rainwater. Yeah, there. It's, it's, something. it does, and it smells like bad turkey leftovers out here right now. <laughs> Okay, thank you, You're Curtis. You know, I'll take a shot out. of that, and we'll move right along. You know, last night on News Channel 8, we brought you exclusive results of an investigation into a deadly accident near Camp Dodge last summer. Jeanette Trumpeter's in the newsroom right now with a follow-up to that. Jeanette? Well, Stephen, Cynthia, as we mentioned yesterday, the families of the soldiers involved just heard about the investigation results yesterday. Tonight, their insight. The mother of an Iowa National Guard soldier killed outside Camp Dodge this summer speaks out about the investigation into her son's death. I want it no one why he was on those drugs. I'm Jeff Greenwood. Tonight, see what she has to say. We found even more Iowans targeted with these counterfeit checks, and this time it involves their homes. Tonight, a follow-up to our stories on online scams. I'm Cynthia Fodor. I'll show you why this intersection in Clive is becoming increasingly dangerous. Plus, it's a big night for football as high school playoff action gets underway, and there's some high school volleyball to talk about at 6. Steve and Cynthia, we'll see you then. Yes, you will. Thanks, Jeanette. All right, we'll be right back. Now you can listen to KCCI News Channel 8's First News at 5 on the radio on New Life 1150 AM, KWKY in Des Moines. As you know, tis the season for cold temperatures and warm family fun. So we're kicking off a special news segment today. You know, we want to keep you covered this holiday season, so we're calling this thing Holiday Helpers. And joining us live from <laughs> Beckley Automotive in downtown Des Moines, yeah, look at us, is <laughs> Pete Drayback. Pete, now lots of people are going to do a lot of traveling in the coming weeks, so what do we need to do now? In fact, coming up this weekend, we could start getting the family car ready for the road. Sure. The biggest things you can do for yourself at home on your vehicle are going to be checking your air pressures. The colder it gets now as temperature changes, so will your air pressures and your tires. The other thing will be making sure your tires have adequate tread on them. Um, the newer your vehicle is, there's actually the less things you can do at home. You actually have to take it to your car expert to get those things checked out. Like this model itself, the battery on this car is in the trunk, so there's no way for you to check the cables or anything on your own. You have to take it to your service center and have that taken care of. 
um, other than checking your, your fluids in your car, making sure that your antifreeze is full, your belt systems are in good shape, no cracking or, or chipping with them. A big thing people overlook are wiper blades. Wiper blades should be placed at least once a year. Um, that's something a lot of people overlook. Even though it might not be torn, it's rubber's porous. It does dry, crack, and eventually does split. Those are just some small, and, and headlights are another thing. Those are just some small things you can do on your own. Um, like I said, the newer the vehicle, you really need to take it into your expert to get that taken care of, because it's more than you can do by yourself. Okay, uh, Pete, what about oil? Do we go to a different weight this time of year? What do we do? Most of your automotive manufacturers have weights that are set for all climates. Like this vehicle using a 5W30 in it, it's an all-season oil. You should use it all year round. Um, your, the people that take care of your oil changes and your, your uh, automotive specialists or your dealerships will keep the proper oil in your car for you at all times. And don't forget, I guess, about the windshield washer fluid and the little yep. things like that, huh? That's correct. Okay. All right, well, I, my service light's been coming on, so I'm going to be bringing my car over there to you guys real soon. Give us that's, a call down at Beckley. We'll be happy to take care of it. That's not a good thing, huh? Yep. Thanks. Pete Drabeck, thanks for joining us today. You're welcome. Thank you. We appreciate it. Be sure to check out the iowachannel.com and click on the weather tab for details on emergency weather information and a weather travel survivor, survival kit. Say you that can also, ten times. That's hard to say. <laughs> you can also sign up to have school closings and dismissals emailed directly to you every day. And be sure to tune in for our Holiday Helper segment on First News at 5 next Friday. Yes, when we tell you about two unique ways to cook the holiday turkey. One involves a whole, involves a whole bunch of peanut butter in the turkey. No way. In the stuffing. Be sure to watch next Friday. You'll find out. For up-to-the-minute weather information, day or night, call the live Super Doppler 8 Network forecast at 247-8880. Sponsored by Touchstone Energy Cooperatives of Iowa. Today's market report is sponsored by the Des Moines office of A.G. Edwards & Sons. Purchase everyone's working for the weekend. What's and be why like? not? It looks to be a nice one out there. Plenty of sunshine on Saturday. Now, we're going to start out the mornings cool in the 20s, but with sunshine warming things up on Saturday to near 50 degrees, a few more clouds on Sunday, a high of 48, and we... Stay much the same into early next week, warming things up with a chance of rain on Tuesday. But all in all, that's pretty darn that's nice. That's a nice fall weekend. Would you exactly. like to try the cranberry sauce? Oh, sure. Why not? <laughs> okay. Thank you for joining us tonight, folks. There's the traffic downtown on I-235 east and westbound. Looks like it's all backed up.